Hello ladies and gentlemen, I notice you don't have much to say about yesterday's topic in the fact sheet where I asked about whether banning underbone cup chai motorcycles in the city is a good idea. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Federal Territories Minister Tengku Adnan Tengku Mansor believes that these Kapchai skeleton motorbikes be banned from entering Kuala Lumpur when public transport becomes more affordable. Now, there are some rich, spoiled people who welcome the decision, saying that this move will eradicate a nuisance from the city at night, while some lower income netizens said that this being an environmental measure is complete bullshit because Kapchais can give you 40 to 50 kilometers per liter of petrol. If you're not good at math, that means you can do Pataling Jaya to Georgetown and Penang and back for just 35 ringgit worth of Ron 95 petrol. That's twice as much as a Prius, mind you. Plus, you can slip through traffic jams instead of being stuck and unable to change lanes like a motor car. You know what? Now I want a cup chai too. Natural Resources and Environment Minister Wan Jinaidi Tuanku Jafar disagrees with the proposal to ban the Kapchai motorcycles and has instead believed that it's the big lorries that should be banned instead. Wan Jinaidi also says that scientific research should be conducted on the matter before a decision is made. Kunan's proposal yesterday to ban the motorbikes also drew flag from PKR Communications Director Fahmi Fadzil, who voiced out that the proposal would hurt the youth and the lower income groups. Kunan defended his proposal saying that many capital cities already had such a ban in place. After receiving a huge backlash on the internet following a photo on her Instagram account, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Azalina Othman reminded civil servants today to watch their mouth and be more careful about what they say on the internet and social media. Azalina says that civil servants should not think that they are free from monitoring and scrutiny even if they set their social media accounts to private, elaborating that the law is very strict and the monitoring is even stricter. So you have to be careful if you have an opinion. Don't use social media to slander and post defamatory statements. Now you're probably thinking, why is Azalina saying this all of a sudden? She got some backlash when she uploaded this picture. Taken in a Las Vegas casino, she said that the photo was taken excitedly and not that she was gambling, closing off by saying, Sungai Air Tawa Assembly person Kamarul Zaki Abdul Malik was found dead in the living room of his residence this morning by his driver who came to pick him up. According to the driver who was waiting to drive Kamarul to a scheduled event in his constituency this morning, he did not come out of his house. After the driver forced open the door to his residence, he found the 58-year-old Barisan National Assemblyman lying unconscious on the floor. The cause of death is yet to be made known at the time of recording. Sungai Ayatawar is believed to be the smallest state electoral constituency in the state of Selangor with just over 15,000 voters. Kamarul beat passes Wahid Rai is in the last general election by a majority of 1,416 votes. Due to the proximity of Kamarul's passing to the due date of the next general election, there will not be a by-election for the seat. The long and difficult search for the missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 that disappeared almost three years ago with 239 people on board may draw to a heartbreaking close soon as the deep sea search for the plane ended today with no conclusive findings. Malaysia, Australia and China, the three countries involved in the search operation for the missing airliner, issued a joint statement that despite every effort using the best science available, the aircraft is still unable to be located and the decision to suspend the underwater search has not been taken lightly. The final vessel that combed the final stretch of the 120,000 square kilometer area of the Indian Ocean packed up today, wrapping up a search operation that racked up a bill of 145 million US dollars. Voice 370, a support group for the relatives of the passengers on the doomed flight, say that investigators cannot leave the issue unresolved and urge the tripartite group to extend the search to a new area north of the zone that was covered, an area that experts believe, after elimination of the current search area that just wrapped up, contains the wreckage of the aircraft. And that's the end of the fact sheet. Should there be one final push to find Flight 370? Time to discuss in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thanks for watching.